the US has more satellites than Russia, India, China combined. What leverage does it give the US? Does the US have too many of these satellites? What's the use of all these satellites? Also do a space special someday. Okay. Rahul Dunake says, does the recent five-ton satellite launched by ISRO's LVM-3 M5 rocket, does it represent a significant step forward for India? Or is it still not such a big deal, according to me? Because I've been a long-term proponent of ISRO not punching high enough. Okay, let us uh, address uh, these multiple questions. First of all, does the US have too many satellites? The US has, as of now, more than 10,000 active satellites. More than 10,000 active satellites. Can you believe that number? Can you imagine how many satellites are out there, right? More than 10,000 sat uh, active satellites. So what does the US do with the satellites? Do they have too many of these? Are these, are these pointless? These are not pointless. These are very useful, very important, right? And see, the space sector is the next step in, in exploration. And I have said this for years. I have said this since 2021, that the two or three nations that will lead the world in the space race in the 21st century are the two or three nations that will decide the future of humanity and the two or three nations that will rule the world. So your position in the space race is an indicator of how much of whether you rule the world or not, eventually in the 21st century. So these 10,000 plus satellites, what does the US do with these? See, first of all, many of these satellites are communications satellites, global communications, local communications. They provide various services, internet services, voice services, data services. We need that. Yeah, satellites provide those. So you have communication satellites, you have navigation and timing satellites, the GPS constellation, the, the American GPS, it, it globally is the backbone, it's the foundation for navigation, whether it is civilian navigation, whether it is commercial navigation, whether it's military navigation also, GPS is the foundation of this. So you have a constellation of GPS satellites. Then you have intelligence satellites, national security applications of satellites, spy satellites, you know, surveillance operations, reconnaissance activities, encrypted secure communications, uh, then missile warning systems, then you have battle space coordination, battlefield co coordination, uh, integration of various assets, military assets together so that they all see the same view of the battle space, which is provided by all the different assets piece by piece. But the satellite puts it all together with the help of computers and then it gives every asset a full view of the battle space, a full integrated picture. Well, that's very important. Satellites do that. Then you, you have activities like... Uh, Earth observation that can be regular Earth observation or very specific Earth, earth ob observation, which is spying activity, you know, high resolution images in real time of what's happening on the planet, very important. But you also have things like weather monitoring, you know, scientific things like uh, scientific activities like monitoring of, of climate change over time, uh, monitoring natural disasters if they happen, monitoring agricultural developments and soil soil quality and, and whatnot, right? There is that. Then um, you have obviously a very large number of Starlink satellites that is global high-speed internet. Those satellites may be dual purpose satellites. They may also have other purposes that are, that are being served there, right? So you have all these, all these benefits of having satellites and, and, and every satellite is different. A single satellite will not give you all these benefits, right? Every satellite will have a certain function or, so, or a specific set of, of, of uh, functions that is assigned to it. Now, if you have all these satellites, 10,000 of, of these satellites which do different things, what benefit does it give you, right? So one thing, if you have this gigantic number of satellites and this tremendous diversity of satellites, they all do so many different things. This helps the United States maintain its technological leadership in the world. It ensures that there is continuous development, continuous innovation in the US. They want better and better satellites, right? And there is development in uh, 
the space launching technologies, reusable rockets. If you have so many satellites and you need to keep on replenishing those, you need lots and lots of launches, space launches. So that has given rise to the reusable rocket technology that that uh, SpaceX SpaceX has developed. This the, for that you also need to you know better miniaturize satellites. So that also is a technological advancement. Um, so all of this ensures the technological superiority of the US, then you have global influence. The US, uh, you know, the US is able to, because of the gigantic number of satellites, it's able to control these this uh, infrastructure because it owns it. And this gives the US the power to influence uh, whatever happens in the world. It, it can influence uh, the standards for space technology. It, it gives the US uh, military leverage. It gives the US leverage in diplomacy, global diplomacy. It makes the US the primary uh, provider of, of security. It, it gives the US uh, hegemony and, and primacy in all its security alliances because all the other partners will depend on US military and other technology, communications technology. It also gives US primacy in economic relationships and partnerships with, with, with everybody. It positions the US as the dominant partner in very asymmetric relationships. Military, uh, you know, the US military is very deeply integrated with all these space-based assets. Uh, it gets real-time data, gets real-time in, uh, intelligence. The satellites allow the US military to, to control and command assets all across the world. The US has more than 700 extraterritorial military bases with the US military uh, assets deployed all across the globe. How do you come How do you control all of that cohesively, right? So th these satellites, they give the US the ability for this uh, to, to command and control all these assets cohesively. Um, the US is able to do precision targeting of when, whenever there's a military operation, if you need precision targeting, the satellites give it the ability to do, do that. So all of this gives the US tremendous asymmetrical advantages of or anybody or any adversary. Um, now the US is the leading commercial uh, launcher of satellites. And it also has the largest number of commercial satellites that have been deployed. And these serve so many markets globally, right? So the US, it's able to capture all this economic value from the space economy. And this is uh, projected to be worth trillions of dollars in this century. Um, and, and so much more. So all of these, these satellites, this, this, this massive fleet of satellites, it gives the US a tremendous advantage in all these different sectors, communication, navigation, military, defense, uh, economic and commercial activities, diplomacy, science, whatnot, right? So this strengthens the US national security. It strengthens, it augments the American economic power, mm -hmm. and it enables the US to set global norms global rules in the space sector and it obviously uh, enables the us to maintain its superiority in the global emerging geopolitical competition for space the rush for the moon everyone's rushing back to the moon eventually it's going to be mars there's going to be space tourism there's going to be militarization of space there's going to be eventually asteroid mining and so much more so all of this for all of this you need to have a massive satellite fleet a massive uh, space industry so all of this it it is uh, central to america's global leadership uh, not just in the past century but in this coming century in the 21st century so space is going to increasingly be central to geopolitical power and not it's not just nations but corporations within nations that are going to play a pivotal role in all of this in, in securing access to space, securing perhaps territory outside of Earth, maybe on the moon, maybe in Mars, uh, in, in shaping the rules and the norms of how to behave in space, what you can do, what is allowed, what is not allowed, right? They get to decide, we don't get to decide. And all of this will protect US um, interests 
beyond our planet right so so hopefully this explains why the us has invested so much in the space sector the us invests in the future they don't react they set the scene they set they they formulate the rules they set the rules and everybody else marches to that beat and they abide by the rules so if you want to be a leading power in the world you have to be rea- not reactive you have to be proactive and the only nation beyond the us that is being proactive is currently china even russia is is tagging along with china so that's the deal so considering what i have just explained 10000 plus satellites and all everything that these satellites achieve for the us and all the advantages these satellites give to the us do you think one 510 satellite launch is going to put india in any kind of advantages position is it that great i am not saying it's bad thing it is not a bad thing i'm happy that isro has used its most powerful rocket which is a medium lift vehicle to uh, put this 510 satellite into orbit good it's good to see a launch by isro after a, a certain period of time the us launches weekly the chinese launch so many times a year i don't know how many times isro launches per year five six times i'm not sure i may i may be wrong maybe 15 times maybe three times i'm not sure but it's nothing comparable to what to what the us is doing and our heaviest and most powerful rocket is a medium lift rocket okay please be cognizant of this fact i'm not sure when we're going to develop reusable rocket technology probably by the 2030s when it's already old technology because spacex developed the technology like 15 years ago so i uh, do not see india being currently even a player in the space race and i don't blame isro for this isro is fantastic isro with these tiny limited budgets achieves so much right isro's engineers are brilliant isro's isro is a fantastic organization it's one of the one of the organizations that shows india what we are capable of but it needs the budget it needs the 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 projects right it needs the right kind of leadership the right kind of ambition that has to come from outside of isro because isro does what it's told right by the government of india so that's the problem i don't see india uh, i am it's not about isro not punching high enough it's about india not having the ambition of being a leading space power we just okay we are there in space we have isro we can launch satellites we don't depend on others to launch satellites except very large ones in which case we will either go to france or to spacex but otherwise we can launch satellites and maybe in 5 10 years we will have a rocket that is twice as powerful as the one we have and maybe in 10 15 years we'll have perhaps a reusable rocket so we are this this is the standard indian way of doing things develop technologies that others have developed 20 30 years ago now that's what we keep doing and that is what obviously frustrates me because we are capable of so much more we are capable of leading the world in space but whoever is in charge uh, maybe doesn't see sufficient value right now in us doing that see so the chinese the chinese always plan ahead the chinese see themselves as a superpower even though they currently are not and even 20 years ago they were seeing themselves as a superpower and they were putting the 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 pieces in place that would ensure that when china becomes maybe three times more powerful it will have all the capabilities already in place not that once we reach a 20 trillion dollar economy then we will start developing x kind of rocket or y kind of rocket no they started doing that when they were a 3 trillion dollar economy so china always seeks to punch way ahead of its of its weight and india waits until it reaches a certain weight category to start behaving like that that weight category that's the difference between india and china and that is obviously going to be a source of frustration for people who understand what's happening and what we are capable of 